Believe it or not, has plenty of cool things to play if you're a single player gamer. Here is a big old list of the top 25 single player games of this year, both new and upcoming. Let's get started off with number 25. Scorn is a game that's been in the works for many, many years, from a Kickstarter to now some funding from Microsoft. It's finally getting the light of day this year after so long, and it's just a weird, gross sci-fi horror first-person shooter. I don't really know a better way to describe this one, but for me, the main appeal is the art direction, the art style, very much inspired by H.R. Giger, H.R. Geiger, uh, famous for the alien designs from the original movies, as well as a ton more. This game seems to lean on the body horror, the mystery and atmosphere and world building that we come to for something like this. And if you're an offbeat horror fan like me, it seems like this is going to have some good stuff for you. Thankfully, we finally get to check it out October 21st. Next over at number 24, we have a game called Valkyrie Elysium. In this, you play as the Valkyrie who is tasked with seemingly saving an already doomed world, and it's a good old action RPG. I mean, look at it on screen here. Don't know too much about it, but when it was shown off earlier this year at an event, we couldn't help but be hooked on it simply because it just looks like a little blast of nostalgia. As much as it's very pretty and cool and flashy, there's something about it with the way the combat works, the summoning, the character designs that just seems a little bit old school and something that might really perfectly scratch that itch. We'll know for sure when we get our hands on this one pretty soon, September 29th. Now, next over at number 23, we have The Quarry. This is from the developers behind the Dark Pictures anthology and more importantly, the incredible Until Dawn. The Quarry takes very much what they set up with Until Dawn and runs with it. It embraces goofy, schlocky horror, some good tension and dread, and lovable characters that you're also gonna wanna probably see get systematically taken out by the bad guys. This is a game about quick time events, dialogue choices, looking for clues, talking to your fellow camp counselors, and just kind of in enjoying a tongue-in-cheek horror story that can go in a variety of different ways. It's really cool to see how this one plays out, trust me, especially with the graphics. It's also just a looker. And like I said, if you played Until Dawn, if you liked any of their previous games, you should absolutely give The Quarry a shot this year. Next over at number 22, we have Triangle Strategy. This is actually from the producer of Bravely Default and Octopath Traveler. So if you've touched either of those games, you really know what to expect here, but with a huge dash of actual hardcore strategy gameplay. If you like RPGs with a bunch of playable characters, this game has 20 skill systems, party systems, and the art style of something like Octopath Traveler. Triangle Strategy is really just a good combination of a bunch of different things. And if you need something a little bit meatier or something a little deeper on Nintendo Switch, this has got you covered. Next over at number 21, we have Pokemon Legends Arceus. Now this released earlier this year and kind of revitalized some of the Pokemon gameplay uh, with open world, fully 3D graphics and a more complex catching and battling system. It was very cool, especially how it was set in a different time period uh, for the Pokemon universe. It was a nice refresh, but along with that this year, towards the end of the year with November, we gotta mention Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet also coming, which is going to give us and expand even more on this new style of open world catching gameplay and we're excited to see how that pans out. Really regardless, 2022, if you're a Pokemon fan, you're eating good and that's important. Next over at number 20, we have Cult of the Lamb. Do not overlook this one because I'll admit I did it first and I really regret it. This is an excellent hybrid of kind of an Animal Crossing chill out type of management thing and a dungeon runner where you're gonna find yourself doing, oh, just one more run, just one more run. The way this combines going into dungeons, fighting enemies, getting important items and then bringing it back to your little cult that you're building up and keeping that cult going by managing your followers, keeping them fed, doing all that type of thing. It's incredibly addictive, even more than I expected. And just a cool, unique vibe to it all. It just really is something else. Came out of nowhere for us, so definitely check it out if you haven't. Next over at number 19, Dying Light 2 and its upcoming expansion DLC, Bloody Ties. The original Dying Light 2 base game is really fun. The open worlds it gives you are a lot of fun to jump around in and kill zombies. And with Bloody Ties, it marks the start of seemingly a bunch of content being added to the game over time to hopefully just flesh out the combat, the enemy types, and the world even more. 
Next over at number 18, we have Sifu, which released earlier this year, but is probably gonna find its way on a bunch of game of the year lists. This action brawler is incredibly challenging, but super satisfying to learn and master and complete. It's been updated with a bunch of different modes and options and skins, and the really has just been getting better and better. But even at its core, this is just a tight, challenging, fun brawler with a great move system, really satisfying hits, blocking, parrying, dodging. All of the feedback is perfect. The art style, the vibe is really cool. The way you kind of memorize your runs and just kick ass. It's really just a badass simulator. It's a mix between John Wick and It Man in all the right ways. We love it. You might love it. Or if you haven't played it yet, check it out. Next over at number 17, we have New Tales from the Borderlands. This is a follow-up to Telltale Games' Tales from the Borderlands game that was very well received. That one really blew people away with its incredible depth of storytelling and world building and that just made Borderlands better. So now they're doing it again, but this time with a different team internally at Gearbox, the publisher owner of Borderlands, but they've got some of the original people working on it. And so far, the initial reveal seemed promising. It's gonna be hard to top that original run of Tales from the Borderlands, but we'll find out for sure when this one drops October 21st. Next over at number 16, we have High on Life. This is a first person shooter from Squanch Games. Most notably, the people behind Rick and Morty, Justin Roiland, that whole creative team. And this is very much a quirky, wacky sci-fi shooter where the guns are aliens and they talk to you, the player, seemingly constantly. Now this is very much a humor is subjective thing. Everybody has a different type of sense of humor. You're gonna find this stuff either incredibly annoying or absolutely hilarious, but I'm curious to see what they're doing in the gameplay department because visually, uh, graphics wise, art direction, it seems pretty quirky and cool. We are gonna get our hands on this game at the end of the year, December 13th. Next over at number 15, we have Gotham Knights. We've talked about this one a lot. They've been hyping this one up for years. We're still a little cautiously optimistic because of the combat, but overall what this is is a new Bat Family adventure where Commissioner Gordon and Batman are both dead and it's up to the Bat Family to work together and clean up the streets of Gotham that are currently riddled with uh, the Court of Owls, Mr. Freeze and his gang, Harley Quinn, and a bunch more. When this game was first revealed, a lot of people thought it was a multiplayer games as a service type thing, but you can still play this game completely single player, which is absolutely excellent for someone like me who just wants to do a Nightwing run or a Red Hood run. We've had a run of some really good Batman games and just really good superhero games, so it's gonna be tough to reach the great heights that we've really hit recently, but we'll know for sure when it releases October 21st. Next over at number 14, the Call of Duty money train continues to roll no matter what with the release this fall of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. This is the follow-up to Modern Warfare, the game that released a few years back that kind of rebooted the whole Modern Warfare and Call of Duty thing with a newer engine and fresher visuals and gameplay concepts. And while we don't know too much about it yet, more is probably going to be revealed soon uh, at the time of making this video. We do know that it is going to have a single player campaign. And if you just like big, dumb, fun action adventures, they're always worth checking out. If it's anything like the previous Modern Warfare campaign, they really go all out on some big cinematic set piece moments that were really fun to play through. We'll probably hear more about this game soon, but we do know that it's released November 10th. Next over at number 13, we have Xenoblade Chronicles 3. This game is absolutely awesome. If you're looking for a great JRPG on Nintendo Switch, look no further. I mean, this series has kind of been hit after hit. Monolith Soft clearly knows how to make a damn good JRPG, and this one has an incredibly strange sci-fi world with a weird spin on things, something to say, and memorable, likable characters that, yes, very much repeat their lines throughout battle. But still, while you are battling, you're getting just a better version of Xenoblade Chronicles gameplay with way more to do, things to manage, and part Party members to mess around with. The world they built here is great, and if you love JRPGs, you should not miss this one. Next over at number 12, sticking with Nintendo Switch, we have Kirby and the Forgotten Land. This is Kirby's big, bold 3D adventure in a variety of different environments with really fun gameplay concepts, utilizing Kirby's very unique skill set and some really cool boss battles. Sometimes you really just need a good old fashioned video game like this one. Next over at number 11, we have Stray. This is a single player cat adventure game where you play as a cat lost in a kind of dystopian future robot run city. There are no humans in sight and it seems like these robots are really the only thing out there and you as this cat adventure through these lands, picking things up, 
solving puzzles, running from danger, platforming, and while it is a very simple game to play, there's not too much to it. The atmosphere, the adventure, the mystique of it all, and just the fun of messing around and playing as a cat in a strange sci-fi world is really, really appealing. If this wasn't on your radar for it just being the game where you play as a cat, you should still consider it for the cool sci-fi aesthetics and just a good, solid adventure. Next over at number 10, we have Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. This is essentially a love letter to Lego Star Wars fans. Whether you were a little bit older for the games or you grew up playing them, they were absolutely iconic. And what you have here is a new spin on the Lego Star Wars gameplay and just new versions of playing through all of these movies. More lightsaber combat, better third person shooting, more jokes, different jokes, more characters to play as, and open worlds to explore. There's an absolute metric ton of stuff in these games. It's packed to the gills and you can play it with a friend or you can play it completely solo. And just for that alone, for cruising through and playing through the movies and seeing another new spin on Lego Star Wars stuff is pretty much worth the price of admission. If you like this stuff, you're probably gonna dig this one. Next over at number nine, we have Bayonetta 3. We're finally getting a new Bayonetta game after waiting for so many years. These third person action games to rival Devil May Cry have always been really great. Bayonetta 2 was completely slept on and now this full fledged first Bayonetta game for Nintendo Switch is gonna feature another playable character, crazy over the top screen filling summons and just hopefully more good action combat and over the top stylish and hilarious moments. It's been a long wait, so we're really hoping they knock it out of the park with this one. It's releasing October 28th. Now, next over at number eight, we have A Plague Tale Requiem. This is the follow-up to the absolutely incredible A Plague Tale Innocence. And in it, you travel a medieval world ravaged by plague, overrun with diseased rats, and it's just you, Amicia, and her young brother, Hugo, trying to get by. There's a little bit more to it that I don't want to spoil, but essentially these games are focused around beautiful visuals, tight storytelling, environmental puzzle solving, and the occasional bit of combat that is absolutely effective. This time around, it seems like Amitia is more capable. She's been through a lot in the previous game. She seemingly has more combat abilities and more gadgets. And with a new location and who knows where the story is gonna go, we're very much looking forward to seeing what happens. And it's releasing October 18th. Now, next over at number seven, Evil West. Man, can you look at this game? Does this not just seem like an absolute blast from the past? This just looks like one of those fun, over-the-top, mid-2000s action games with sci-fi and horror elements that I am just absolutely about. This is essentially a Western where you're this badass vampire hunter killer guy with cool over-the-top weapons in fun third-person combat. At this point, I'm not looking for every game to reinvent the wheel. I'm just looking for something to be straightforward and good and fun and creative. And from what we've seen so far with Evil West, it seems like just that. Not really too much more to say about it. Just cool monster cowboy action. Let's go. Next over at number six, Ghostwire Tokyo. If you're looking for a single player game that's a little less traditional, this might be up your alley. It's kind of structured a little bit like a Yakuza game where you walk around a small open world city and get strange quests, but you get them from ghosts. And then you go out and you fight other really cool, creepily designed ghosts with Doctor Strange powers. It's definitely not our favorite game of the year, but it gets a lot of points for just being completely different and really unlike anything you've ever played. It's not necessarily super scary. It's a horror game, but it leans more on like the fun, wacky side of horror, and that totally works here. Some of the boss battles are absolutely wild. Next over at number five, we have Horizon Forbidden West. This release this year, this was the follow up to Horizon Zero Dawn, and it takes the story and world building to new heights. This game goes absolutely crazy from a storytelling standpoint, but along with that, you're just getting a ton more gadgets to work with, more creatures to hunt, a bigger open world with more in-depth side quests, more crafting, more hidden discoveries, even better visuals. Horizon Forbidden West is like the true definition of like a bigger, badder sequel. It's a great one to flex your PS5 if that's what you're looking to do. And like I said, Aloy's journey certainly goes places. Really, more than anything, we're just excited to see where things will go next.
Now next over at number four, we have Atomic Heart. Look at this game. This is an incredible mashup of seemingly simulation style games like Deus Ex or the more recent Prey uh, with a good dash of Bioshock and weird sci-fi horror. Some of the more recent trailers we've seen for this game is just kind of like a compilation of just endless mind-blowing strange stuff from melee combat, cool guns, to just downright shocking enemies. Stuff that we've never seen before in games. I am incredibly excited for this one if you can't tell. Even if it just boils down to it looks cool, it seems very creative, and it's like Bioshock. That's all I really needed, to be honest. This one has been in the works for a really, really long time. It's been delayed many, many times, but as of right now, we know it's slated for late 2022. Now, next at number three, we have Callisto Protocol. This is another good old fashioned video game from a lot of the people behind the original Dead Space. And they have admitted this is very much a spiritual successor of that. What you get here is third person survival horror, tight corridor, stressful action. And you can see it here with some brutal melee, cool weapons, and tons of awesome zombie and creature gore. I've said it before, but Callisto Protocol just looks like exactly what the doctor ordered if you just like third person survival horror action adventure games. It's been a minute since we got like a really good solid triple A one and we're hoping Callisto Protocol delivers because it is gonna squeak by this year. It's releasing December 2nd, 2022. Now down to number two, of course, you know we were gonna mention it, Elden Ring. Elden Ring is an absolute blowout of the Soulsborne formula. They took what they have perfected and they just made it absolutely massive and compelling and yet still incredibly cohesive and thoughtful. The way this game encourages and rewards open world exploration is really satisfying. The combat is still great as you'd expect and the character building is really something else. You're able to get very creative with your builds. Along with that, the vibe, the atmosphere and the variety of the areas and dungeons and enemies. It's just all of that from software stuff you really expect at this point, and it's so fun to get immersed in. Obviously, clearly earlier this year, we all fell in love with Elden Ring, and we're still thinking about it to this day. Now down to number one, the game that we're collectively the most excited about this year on the channel is God of War Ragnarok. We've been looking forward to this one for a very long time as big fans of the original God of War games and of course, God of War 2018 that kind of reimagined things. We're really looking forward to seeing where Kratos and Atreus' story goes this time around. And from what we've seen, it looks like larger worlds, more interaction with NPCs and just stuff in general, more combat options, more enemy types, hopefully more bosses, and the next step in a story of both father and son and also just a wild world filled with mythology and gods. The bar was set pretty high by 2018. We're hoping this one lives up to it and we'll be able to check it out when it releases November 9th of this year.